Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and I know what I hold. I want to show you a couple of, uh, of uh, interesting videos I saw going around this morning. And I know, folks, I know, every time the uh, markets uh, slow down or anything, you, you always see the, the negative rhetoric, that the negative rhetoric uh, creep in. It happens every single time. I see it all the time. But like I, like I started this video, I know what I hold. I'm not distracted by all the noise. I am the noise. All right, watch this video. This is good. This is, um, this is uh, two, I'm drawing a blank on his name, but he's the guy that does, is uh, involved in uh, James. Uh, I'm, anyway, I'll think of it in a little bit. He's with Ripple. He's involved in the CBDC uh, stuff. If I can get it to play. Let me hit the old refresh button. I've, there's been some issues with um, videos playing on X here. Is in terms of native cryptos like XRP, Bitcoin, Ethereum, um, you know, they're not all the same, right? They're not all created equal. Uh, um, I think what's becoming much more popular in the industry now is more sustainable technologies. So the XRP ledger and XRP is. Um, there's no mining or proof of, stake of work, proof of work or proof of stake involved. So the, 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 the computational cost of uh, you know, validating transactions is almost zero, right? Very, very low cost and very stable in terms of, in terms of pricing. Um, stable coins, again, not all created equal. Um, you have a massive range from the algorithmic type stable coins. You know, we all know the Terra story from a few weeks ago. Uh, and then now what we're seeing emerging is, um, you know, stable coins being issued by regulated entities. So I can't give you the names yet, but there's two projects we're working on, one in the UK and one in the US, working with banks that are regulated um, who will be issuing stable coins and the reserves um, will likely to be held at a central bank in a central bank account. So very different from the algorithmic uh, stable coin. You know, we as Ripple work across all of these technologies. And then, of course, your central bank digital currencies, which uh, essentially is the, um, the highest form of digital currency, right? Issued by the central bank, backed by the central bank, the most secure form. Um, as a company who's working across the payment space, you know, we're embracing all of these. We see they will all play their part in the future of, of money. Um, I mean, today, cryptocurrency is less than 1% of all the money. Central bank money is less than 10%. The rest is all commercial bank money. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, in five or 10 years, you know, how does that look when it's all digitized? You know, will stable coins be 90% of the market and CBDCs 10%? Or will CBDCs actually be allowed to grow and be a much higher percentage of the money supply? I, I don't know. That's for the policy makers to decide. Okay, then there was another one to get back to perspective. This is um, Darren Moore. Had, this is a clip from Darren Moore and Riz XRP had put it out. It's good stuff from the DTCC. Is there other, are other options? And Come on now. Onus on us is to explore these options and determine which capabilities each technology solution and architecture in many ways um, is a best fit for the problems that we're trying to solve. So, for example, there are going to be other, uh, you know, distributed database solutions that could be applied in, you know, light of solving these problems. But when you start to then add on additional capabilities like uh, tokenizing a security um, and providing smart contract or programmable programmable functionality, you know, uh, to a transaction, then you start to really unlock some of the power that distributed ledger technology provides. And so it's that aggregation of a variety of capabilities that have pointed us to this particular technology. But I do think that it's important to pull out, um, you know, the point that you're making, James, which is that it 
blockchain is in many areas a solution in search of a problem and so we've taken a very critical view when we evaluate our use cases to ensure that a blockchain solution that we are applying is a very tightly scoped one for the use case that is not just putting a solution on a chain but rather understanding what additional capabilities and therefore value that we can unlock by putting a solution on a network or on a chain. DTCC is critical of blockchain for obvious reasons, but for tokenization, programmable money, and micropayments, a variety of use cases, quote, you unlock the power of distributed ledger technology. Quote, a blockchain solution that we are applying is a very tightly scoped use case. So they're applying a blockchain solution. Donald Donahue from DTCC is an advisor for Ripple Labs. Wow. He's a board member. I'm very interested in the capabilities distributed payment technology seem to offer for improving the safety, soundness, and cost effectiveness of global payments and settlement infrastructure, Donahue remarked. Ripple is already a clear leader in the space. I'm looking forward with Ripple Labs team to deliver on these exciting possibilities. Darren Moore gets it. Darren Moore is one of the adults in the room. Check it out. JP Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon warns U.S. economy heading towards the cliff. Predicts debt rebellion. Uh-oh. That sounds ominous. And then right here, this is about the GPT, GBTC profit taking in the Bitcoin ETF. Listen to this. Top stories. JP Morgan thinks that the worst of the ETF selling pressure on Bitcoin might be over. In a research note on Thursday, the investment bank said that investors taking profits from the conversion of the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust has likely been a driver of Bitcoin's recent correction. JPM estimated that of the $4.3 billion that's exited GBTC, about $3 billion can be linked to profit taking. Now the other 1.3 billion, potentially investors moving into cheaper ETFs. The bank thinks that with most of the profit taking out of the way, that grayscale driven pressure on Bitcoin will ease. Also, as for which cheaper ETFs investors could be moving to, JP Morgan sees two competitors to grayscale emerging, BlackRock and Fidelity. Both have much lower fees. Next, regulators in- Uh-oh. But the, they're, they're basically saying it's all kind of coming to an end. So my prediction is you're about to see a marketing surge, about to see Super Bowl commercials and all that stuff. Now, looks like there might be some problems with Ethereum. Go figure. A lot of problems going on in, in Ethereum. And we talk about a lot on here, right? Like whether it's yeah. about NFT, whether it's about centralization, infrastructure, centralization. Wait, Hinman said they were decentralized. That can't be right layer two infrastructure centralization issues like there's a whole lot of issues but i think because the market no happened. it's already built out the sec told charles gasparino that ethereum was already built out it was way past all of that and that's why it's got uh got a free pass so big those are highlighted more than in any other yeah. protocol and a lot of problems okay but so Put that feather in your cap, and then this this was going around. Uh, Stephen Nerioff had had uh, retweeted this. Sometimes you forget all the whack job things that Joseph Lubin said, but this one went past my desk today, so I had to show you. And on top of this financial plumbing layer, um, which is incredibly exciting, it, it's basically um, removing the priests uh, from uh, intermediating our access to the monetary gods or the financial gods. What? Um, because everybody's going to be able to use their own magic internet money Legos or build their own magic internet money Legos or fork some and connect them to others. and. And so it, it really opens up the system and lays it bare uh, for us to uh, build what we want, build our own bank or, or lender or whatever. Um, and 
on this new financial infrastructure. Uh, many new industries will be built and, and many existing industries will be re-architected. Um, so we'll see lots of collaboration networks um, tokenized um, with their own embedded tokenized governance. Um, I think all of this is going to lead to much more granular governance uh, in the world. Um, so uh, essentially we're in a world where we have these governments that uh, make decisions, um, two party governments or one party governments, and they make decisions for all the people and they don't serve most of, most of the people very well. A narrow set of interests uh, essentially um, follows their own needs and um, with more granular governance, we're going to be able to essentially create our own money in different projects. You can create really? your own token um, on your project and define your own goals and follow. He's going to create his own money. Where's the SEC? Philosophies and execute your own agenda. And so, um, I think that uh, uh, it is going to be a much more empowering future where um, people and smaller organizations have much greater. Uh, economic and political agency. Wow. And then this morning, I just happened to bump into this. Um, this is a, on a law firm's website. It's, uh, well, you can actually see it right here. This is on the, uh, it's Cronenberger and Ro Rosenfeld. Joel Dietz MetaMask litigation on August 1st, 2023, Joel Dietz sued Consensus, Aaron Davis, Joe Lubin, and Dan Finley alleging that Dietz was an original founder of the project that was renamed MetaMask and that the defendants acted together to deny Dietz his ownership stake and the associated profits. We are interested in speaking with people who have knowledge of the allegations in the complaint, including any journalists who have been threatened as described in the complaint. And it's, it says right here that Joseph Lubin, in response, Lubin threatened the journalist by saying, I will make sure your career is destroyed if you publish that story. Talking about a story around this. Very interesting stuff. Now, we're going to go in DAIXRP.com. And let me tell you, if I've learned anything, when you get accused of being a conspiracy that means the translation is, well, that story is true. That's the pattern that I've learned. Anytime the, the word conspiracy is invoked, well, then you better dig deeper because you're right over the target. And I think we're over the target on a lot of things, and I'm going to talk to you about some of them in the group. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that we are directly over the target on several issues. Here we go.